Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello! My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Welcome back to the brand new short series taking you through the very basics of recording and producing. The very basics. Even if you've never dived into the wonderful world of audio production before, by the end of this series you should feel confident in recording and producing your first ever song. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to follow the series along. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kissed me in the rain. In the last video we had a look at adding and recording vocals. Today we're going to be having a quick overview on basic mixing. This will help transform our mix from a collection of recordings into a song. Today we're going to be having a look at the aims of mixing, how to set the levels of our sounds, how to insert plugins and how to pan. I think that before we start the mixing process, we always want to make sure that we have an idea of what we want to achieve, rather than just jumping blindly into what can be quite a big process. When you're working on your own song, you normally do have a really clear idea of what you want your song to sound like and you usually have a reference track, and this is really, really useful. But in most cases, we want to make sure that we have a nicely well-balanced sound, one where there aren't overcrowdings of frequencies and we can hear every element clearly. Basically, we want all of our recordings to be complementing each other and not competing with each other, and this is what the mixing process helps us achieve. To get a good mix, we want to make sure that all the levels of our instruments are right. You don't want to be listening to a song where all you can hear is a tambourine, or where you can't hear the main vocal line at all. And this is why it's really important that we concentrate and make sure that the levels of our sounds are all right. The easiest way to set levels is to go into the mixing window, which we will do by clicking this button on the left. We will see this screen pop up at the bottom, with all of our tracks labelled along it. It looks similar to an analogue mixing desk with each of our tracks being assigned a slider. To change the level of each track, you simply move the slider up or down like so. From my experience, setting the levels can take quite a while, and often you'll need to revisit and make small changes and alterations to the levels. And so, if you listen to your song a couple of days after mixing it, and you're unhappy with how it sounds, don't worry, this is completely normal. Just go back into your project and make the changes, and then listen again in a few more days' time. Now there is so much more to this process, such as gain staging. But again, today we're sticking to the very, very basics, the very minimum that you can get away with. However, I will leave a link in the description to a video I've made that goes into a bit more detail about this all. Using plugins on tracks is basically an engineer's or a producer's rite of passage. It's almost a given that every track will have a plugin on it, whether this be reverb or EQ or delay or compression or something else. Plugins help our tracks work together and sound better. There are many, many different plugins which create different effects and different sounds, and I have made some more in-depth videos about some of these specific plugins, which I'll leave links to in the description so you can go and check those out. So, to insert a plugin, we first want to select the track that we want to apply the plugin to. We then go over to the left-hand side and you find your channel strip. To choose a plugin, you click in this grey box and a menu pops up. This gives us all of the plugins that we can choose from. It's organised into general effects, and then in the side menus you can select a specific one. Once you have done this, the plugin menu will pop up and you can begin to play around with it. And that's really all there is to it when inserting plugins, but as I said, there's so many to choose from that can give you some really interesting sounds. Panning is a really important part of the mixing process. It was invented in the 1930s, but is possibly most widely known for the Beatles' use of it, for some really interesting sounds and effects. Panning is when we choose where in the stereo field our sound sits, or which speaker we hear the sound come out of, essentially. It can be used to add space to our mix, widen the sound of our mixes, and create a really interesting listening experience. 
To pan our tracks, we can either use the mixing window or each individual track's information. We use this little circle, and it looks the same throughout the DAW. So if you see this circle, or this dial, you know that it is to do with the panning of the track. Then you simply drag the dial either to the left or the right, depending on where you want the track to sit in the stereo field. And that's how you pan. There are no specific rules to panning your instruments. You can do whatever you like and whatever feels best to you. However, there are some general guidelines that producers and engineers tend to follow. And I have discussed this again in a previous video, which I'll leave a link to for you. So that's the basics of the mixing process. As I've said quite a lot in this video, there is so much more than what I've mentioned today. And there'll be lots of videos in the description that you can go and check out when you feel a bit more confident in your abilities. Next time for the final video, we're going to be having a look at finishing up and bouncing and exporting our mix. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions down in the comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I shall see you again very soon.